In 1901, when Australians woke up on January 1, they were no longer colonists, they were no longer British, they were suddenly Australians. That was the day that our constitution became, uh, came into effect. It was an act and is an act of the Westminster Parliament and it was written entirely by white male colonists. Now they did a number of things to completely exclude the first peoples from the constitution. And you'll hear a lot of lies about this and you probably have heard them already. Um, so it uses, it used the word race a number of times. It excluded the natives from being counted in reckoning the citizens of the Commonwealth. It, it, it prevented the Commonwealth Parliament from making laws for Aborigines. So the Commonwealth could make laws for the peace and good order of, you know, of the Commonwealth except for Aborigines. It contained uh, a section, it still contains this section, section 25, which is a hangover from the White Australia days and it uh, enabled the Commonwealth to, to give constitutional support to the states, the new states, the former colonies, when they were denying the right to vote or the franchise to certain kinds of people. I don't have to tell you who they were, do I? Um, uh, much later, an Indian man challenged that, uh, challenged his lack of a right to vote and won. Uh, and slowly but surely, the white Australia policy was torn down. In fact, one of the great contributors to ending that disgusting policy was your first Aboriginal graduate, the late Charles Perkins. Um, some people in this room will remember that he not only organised the, with his fellow students, the Freedom Rides, uh, and they started from a bus right here in front of the Great Hall, but he also ran onto the tarmac when the immigration officials had grabbed a little Fijian girl and were deporting her alone back to Fiji. He ran onto the tarmac and grabbed her and took her into his care to stop her from being deported. And it was all over the newspapers and drew attention to how vicious that policy was. But I think we've seen similar uh, circumstances just recently too, haven't we? Um, so, In 1967, there was a referendum and a question was put to the Australian people. Uh, do you agree with the proposition? And I'm just making a long story short here. To remove the words, except for Aborigines, from section 5126, which prevented the Commonwealth from legislating on any matter that affected us. And also the... <coughs> I think it was section 127 that excluded the natives from being uh, counted in any reckoning of the citizens of the Commonwealth. Uh, you might have heard Professor Blaney uh, giving his spin on this. Um, I don't agree with him. Um, <clears throat> the reason for all of that exclusion was about the money. It's always about the money. It wasn't just about the, you know, racial hygiene and keeping the, keeping the natives out. It was also about the money. So 
This was explained in a footnote in a constitutional uh, text by Lanaus. And I found it in a footnote and I thought, oh, that answers all sorts of questions. So if the colonists were mainly in Victoria and New South Wales, because they you know, hadn't made it into the north at that time in the late 19th century uh, in great numbers, and this is, you know, it was in these two colonies where all the money was. And because they designed a federation with a Commonwealth taxation uh, a, a rule that the money was to be collected by the Commonwealth and then redistributed to the new states, they couldn't have the money going to those new states with very large Aboriginal populations because they'd, you know, of their calculations. So in order for the money to only go to white people, they excluded Aboriginal people by all these different means in the census, in the lawmaking, uh, and so on. And the architecture set up by the Constitution lasted well past 1967. Now, it's true that over 90% of Australians voted to get rid of the racist phrase in section 51, 26 and in 127. It's, that's true. They, Australians then thought they were voting for equality. That's what they were led to believe. But, you know, as just as today, they hadn't read the Constitution. It's only 78 pages. I urge you to read it. Even though there was that happened, we remain this kind of ghostly figure in the Constitution. We're not really there because we were excluded by deleting the racist phrase doesn't include us. That doesn't really include us. We're still actually effectively excluded because then the High Court interpreted the new wording of 5126 to mean that the Commonwealth could make laws uh, to our detriment. And that was in the Cartinuary case. So it's a matter of black letter law that the Commonwealth can cause us harm, according to the High Court. Now, one would think that a generous, compassionate government would say, well, that's just black letter law. Let's pass an act, let's pass some legislation to make sure that our legislation that affects Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples meets certain basic standards. Might be human rights standards, might be civil rights standards. Um, and that never happened. In fact, to the contrary, if you look at what has happened to us in the last 10 years, it's really difficult to point to anything uh, that's made our lives better. Um, I won't go on about all of the legislation that I find offensive, but of course the th fact of the matter is that the Commonwealth is exempt from the Racial Discrimination Act. State and territory governments aren't, but the Commonwealth is. So the Commonwealth can treat us in a racist manner. The Commonwealth can cause us detriment at law. So it's worse than just an absence. We're actually vulnerable. We are at risk legally, constitutionally, and as a matter of practice. 